Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, FIADIFTA Media Management Seminar. This is the uh, third in a fourth, uh, the second of a fourth uh, sessions that we'll be presenting through the month of May. Uh, for those that may be new to us, uh, I'm Elena Brody. I'm the chair of the Media Management Commission, along with uh, Jennifer Wilson, who's also the co-chair. And uh, we're thrilled to be back uh, in our Changing Sceneries, Changing Roles, Part 10. Um, in Part 9 was in 2019 in Stockholm. Uh, with COVID, we were unable to meet in person. So we're doing a series of webinars, again, second to fourth. Um, and then we will hopefully be in person next year and live. So uh, without further uh, ado, I will turn it over to our MMC colleague uh, to introduce the panelists and hosts, Xavier. Hello. Thank you, Elena. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we have a uh, three speakers today. The session will run for one hour and 30 minutes in total. Um, and it will be followed by a Q&A session finishing at 5.30 Central European time. Um, each presentation will run for roughly 20 minutes. Um, we will ask you to ask the questions using the Q&A function. Um, you can use the chat uh, during the, um, the presentations to chat among yourselves, uh, use it freely totally open. Um, and uh, then we'll be curating the questions towards the end. Um, our speakers today are um, from, uh, joining us from the Netherlands, uh, Mr. Tim Manders uh, from the Netherlands Institute from Sun for Sound and Vision. Uh, Thomas Petit, joining us from France, from INA. He's a researcher at the French National Institute for Audiovisual Archives. Um, and from uh, Switzerland, Pietro Rezzonico uh, from uh, Swiss Radio Television from the Data and Archives Department. Um, and I think I covered all the housekeeping points. Yes, uh, so <laughs> I'll give the floor uh, to you, Tim, if you please. Yes, uh, Xavier, thank you for letting me go first so I can uh, sit back and uh, learn a lot from uh, my colleagues that are following. Um, I guess you can all see it now. Uh, yeah, work it harder, make it better, do it faster and make us stronger. Nice quote from Daft Punk uh, that I used in the World Conference of Fiat IFTA in 2019 to uh, illustrate what great expectations uh, we had as uh, Sound and Vision for the implementation of uh, face recognition uh, into our broadcast archive uh, media asset management system. Um, and in some ways, uh, yeah, this very baroque title uh, showed uh, yeah, what kind of a glorification uh, you can attribute to uh, artificial intelligence. Um, however, also in 2019 already, um, I pinpointed some uh, yeah, concerns uh, regarding uh, the ethics uh, and the bias uh, that can be a result of uh, facial recognition. Uh, but now we're three years after uh, 2019, um, sort of post-COVID, so it's a good time to look look back at what we uh, thought uh, the service would bring us and uh, to check in what, what, what is actually there nowadays. Uh, visualizing my reflections on uh, back then, uh, what I thought it would bring us uh, and our users especially, I, would, I thought it would be very helpful in terms of fine-grained access to uh, our collection and the persons that were in the, the images uh, of our videos. Um, I also thought it was a, could be a bit painful in terms of uh, inaccuracies uh, especially. Um, let me um, give you some background information on, uh, on sound and vision um, in a timeline uh, that illustrates uh, how we thought that manual annotation in 2018 uh, would be unnecessary anymore. In 2012 at Sound and Vision, we started the media management uh, program, a change program uh, that aimed to uh, enhance metadata earlier on in the production uh, chain. And where that was not possible to um, yeah, sort of post ingest um, uh, 
give uh, automatic uh, labels to to fill the gaps that were uh, um, were there because the production environment couldn't give us, for instance, face labels. Um, to be, uh, I think it's fair to say that in 2018 and also nowadays we indeed uh, managed to uh, really drastically reduce the time spent on manual annotation. So in that regard, it is uh, very successful, this, this media management program. Um, it's also fair to say that, of course, now we spend time on other things like uh, uh, ingest processes and um, uh, uh, checking in uh, how the AI uh, is working uh, for us. Um, um, yeah, checking where are the biases and improving the, the algorithms uh, or let our vendors improve them. Uh, another timeline here on the automatic uh, uh, annotation or AI services that we implemented since 2012. Uh, yeah, first of all, I think it was actually before 2012 that we had our first uh, operate, uh, speech to text operational. Uh, on uh, news and current affairs. And uh, you know, shortly after, we already let it rest in peace because uh, there were many errors uh, in, in the speech to text. Um, and as you will see, as you see later at the baby uh, totally down in the slide, uh, it will be born again because nowadays the, the quality is much higher. And so I'm happy to say that we will uh, implement it again into our archive. Uh, which is very useful, of course, for uh, huge audio collections that are not uh, described. Uh, then another um, service that uh, unfortunately uh, died in 2019 is the Tesaros uh, labeling. Uh, it was topical labeling of persons, uh, locations, corporation names uh, based on uh, subtitles. And, uh, we operationalized this with together with a small vendor and uh, the vendor was bought by a Google or whatever, a big player. Uh, so it, it died, unfortunately. Then the third one that we still have running is the speaker voice recognition. It's the detection of, of the names of uh, persons uh, that speak and at the, the time code that they are speaking. And this works very well. Then in 2019, as said, we implemented face uh, labeling and uh, it's still in place and we will see uh, later on how, how that go, goes. And I also put the metadata orgy because uh, in the past uh, I sort of uh, made a prediction that in the end it would be, we would be uh, dealing with a big metadata orgy in which all this uh, sort of different services would work together. Uh, in terms of validating uh, labels, uh, but that didn't happen. So we're still waiting uh, for this uh, kind of wild mess of metadata. Um, yeah, face recognition, uh, uh, let me zoom in on it a bit. It was uh, a set implemented in 2019, uh, not by ourselves. We uh, worked together with a small Dutch uh, vendor, Vico Vision. And basically it works quite simple uh, on our, our daily ingest of, of, uh, of all the you know, public broadcast of, of video of certain uh, genres that have lots of faces in them, presumably news, current affairs, uh, film, uh, that kind of uh, productions you have to think of. Uh, they are ingested and they are compared to the face modeling database, uh, which consists uh, in the beginning of you know, roughly 1,000 persons that we deemed very important persons. Uh, and yeah, in, technically they are zeros and ones and they are compared to the frames and uh, we get back uh, labels uh, of these persons uh, with the time codes uh, that they are uh, present uh, uh, in the video. Uh, for us at Sound and Vision, it's quite a black box, uh, this service, because we rely on the external vendor. It was also a conscious choice to uh, not be bothered with all the technical details. Um, but however, we did formulate some yeah, rudimentary mechanisms uh, also that we gave to our vendor to say what we expected in terms of uh, quality and quantity. Um, and also we raised some privacy uh, concerns in the beginning already. Um, what you see here is um, 
yeah, sort of a graph of the first pilot we did with uh, face recognition uh, uh, to measure uh, how accurate it was. Uh, below, you see the uh, confidence score intervals that uh, sort of tell us uh, how accurate it is. And uh, what you see uh, there at the confidence score between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8 uh, still give quite a lot of accurate results. Uh, but below you get much more errors. And what we decided as sound and vision is that it would be only acceptable to have these labels into our archive if nine, roughly 90% of all the labels would be correct. Uh, so this is the um, yeah, confidence score that we chose as a threshold. Uh, so all the labels that are above 0 0.7 uh, confidence score are ingested into our uh, media asset management system and all the rest goes away. Uh, including also some correct uh, labels there. Um, what we also, uh, uh, yeah, as a safeguard, uh, decided is that only the names of uh, people that are into our thesaurus uh, would be labeled. So in that sense, only yeah, famous people, uh, TV makers, politicians, people that were already sort of in the public domain as a, a public figure would be labeled and not, let's say, an activist in a demonstration that wants to remain uh, anonymous. And we also decided that no children would be labeled. And we made this decision quite intuitive, uh, I have to say. Um, so we created the face model database that consisted of 1,000 people, uh, and national and international, um, mostly TV presenters, actors, uh, political figures. And what we didn't really think of back then is that already such a, a manual selection uh, would lead to biases and, and gaps in uh, what would be annotated. Uh, because, yeah, first of all, you had to be in our thesaurus, and our thesaurus is also not complete. And second of all, uh, we handpicked it again uh, based on uh, a list of important people, and that are people that usually are in the news. And let's say in uh, entertainment categories or something, uh, we, uh, we didn't put them in the face model database. As a result of that, uh, you would have gaps again. Let's say we have uh, four persons to be annotated by the face labeling uh, service. Only three of them would be labeled if the third one was not in the thesaurus and not in the face model database. And you see this also in practice here in this uh, example uh, that is quite yeah, showing already immediately that you see three persons that are labeled. And guess who they are? They are the gentlemen there with a ties and uh, they are politicians and the comedian there on the left was not uh, labeled uh, because it was not in our face labeling database. Um, yeah, here's a, some might say funny example of uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, artificial intelligence can have it wrong. Uh, this person there with a new sound and vision logo, by the way, uh, that you see there, everybody would think it's Kim Jong-un and the uh, uh, service also uh, recognized this as such with 99.945, blah, 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 uh, uh, certainty, uh, but it's not, it was a lookalike. Um, um, what we noticed in the beginning already uh, is, is much less funny actually, is that uh, people that looked Asian uh, would often be uh, labeled as Kim Jong-un. Um, later on, I have even an example of a woman that's recognized as Kim Jong-un. It's terrible. What we did to uh, yeah, avoid complaints about it was uh, to hire the thresholds for people that were terrorists or basically horrible people, uh, instead of 0 0.7 uh, threshold, we took a 0 0.9 threshold uh, to avoid this, uh, this kind of, of labeling. Um, but still, it goes wrong. Uh, yeah, here's some, some bizarre examples uh, that are uh, quite terrible. Uh, the above, uh, yeah, drawing is of a supposed criminal and it was labeled as Bernie Sanders, but below the confidence score threshold of 0 0.7, so no big deal. 
uh, but this woman here was labeled as Kim Jong-un with a high uh, score, so uh, quite terrible. Or not quite, just very terrible. Uh, we made also some steps to improve uh, last year. Um, we implemented a phase model suggestion tool that uh, basically scraped all the uh, new ingest of video and identified which phases were not yet in our phase model database, uh, but do occur very frequent in the media. Uh, so in that sense, we could also see now that such a comedian, as you saw in the in, in the slide before, was maybe more important than, than we as uh, archivists or media managers uh, would think. And based on this frequency, we now add new people to the face model database. So it's, it's a bit more uh, neutral, uh, this, this process of uh, adding up to the model database. Um, and in terms of, of bias, uh, we had a discussion with our vendor that we saw this bias, not only on, on Kim Jong-un, uh, but in, in general, uh, yeah, to de define it probably politically incorrectly on, in categories, we saw that the uh, face labeling didn't work so well on, the, on elderly uh, people, on uh, people that looked Asian or black, and uh, if you see here the numbers at, with the percentage uh, of mistakes in 2019. Um, you see that defined as other read white privileged people, uh, you see that the mistake rate was 10% roughly, and for the other categories, it, it uh, was much more. And uh, so, what we did with the face. A model suggestion tool that I just showed. Um, we basically uh, ingested um, a chunk of our archive that we knew that was much more diverse, uh, and we processed this to the face suggestion tool uh, to identify which which people should be labeled uh, um, and these. We deserve a place in our face model database, but it was also a, um, a means to uh, to check what was the actual accuracy and uh, the, the amount of mistakes. So um, our vendor uh, sort of saw a point when they uh, when they came up with this mistake uh, uh, percentages of forty percent or thirty percent or fifteen percent. It's yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, so they tweaked their black box. We don't know how, but they did. And uh, the amount of mistakes nowadays uh, are much uh, less. So that's fantastic uh, news, according to me. Still a lot to improve there. Uh, and we, I would like to work together internationally as well on benchmarking and uh, creating diverse uh, training sets, etc. cetera. That uh, would be great. Uh, because this these percentages are they are measured by the vendor and they are measured on a small set. So uh, in practice, probably it's uh, less uh, fortunate than presented here. Um, then some uh, yeah some numbers that are also fantastic. Uh, when we started with thousand uh, models in the beginning uh, and uh, in October two thousand nineteen already thirteen hundred. Uh, we had within a few months um, 94,000 fragments labeled with faces. And now in 2022, I, yeah, I checked a few days ago, we have uh, yeah, roughly 2,300 face models. Um, it's doubled, it yeah, could be more, uh, but we pay the vendor per face model. So we are also selective to be honest. Uh, but we do have uh, almost 2 million fragments uh, labeled with faces. So that, that's great if you see it as an absolute figure here, uh, but if you compare it to the amount of programs we have in, the, in our catalog, it's, it's uh, in more than 2 million, it's almost nothing. So in order to you know, validate the service and uh, make it also more known and useful for users, it would be better if it was more spread out over a, a whole catalog, of course. Um, 
Yeah, let me take you back to 2019, what I identified then as uh, challenges, and let's see where we are uh, now. And uh, there was the issue of new celebrities that are emerging on TV every day and that we should track down uh, in order to keep our face model database up to date. Uh, this we tackled uh, via this suggestion tool. So that's a uh, uh, yeah, big green color there. It's very nice. In uh, terms of accuracy, uh, I think the prediction that 90% uh, um, of all the labels should be correct, uh, we handled that. I, I think it's much higher even. I think it's, uh, in the last figures I saw, it was more like 95%, so that's great. Uh, and then, the quantity um, uh, of the labels uh, um, is, of course, also of relevance because uh, everything below the 0.7 threshold is, uh, is not ingested in the archive. Uh, I think for all the programs that, uh, that we process, uh, roughly 50% of the faces that are actually visible in, a, um, in, in the broadcast are, are labeled uh, with this 90, 95% accuracy. So that's good. Uh, but as said, uh, it's only very small drip in the ocean that is our archive that, that actually have face labels. So we can do uh, more there. Um, then in terms of uh, privacy, uh, privacy, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, uh, and ethics um, and bias. Um, yeah, we, we tackled uh, uh, a bit there, uh, as you saw in these figures. Um, but overall, I think it's a topic uh, that's in regards to artificial intelligence gains a lot of yeah, momentum to discuss. Uh, there is a European law that uh, uh, addresses it. and. Um, in conferences or webinars like this, it's a big topic. Uh, also within sound and vision, it's uh, a topic that is uh, yeah, seen as important now on not only on the management level, but also uh, slowly, slowly, much more on, on every level. So that's, that's really great. Um, and I can share for this spotlight. And of course, this, yeah, as I said, still work to do also internationally to overcome uh, this issue of diversifying. Um, so these were the uh, yeah, issues that were there in uh, the challenges in 2019 that are yeah, partly solved, partly still uh, relevant, and we're working on it. Then there are also some uh, some challenges that I uh, yeah, didn't list at least in the slides of uh, 2019 that I think uh, are are relevant nowadays. One of them is performance. You see that with uh, artificial intelligence, uh, speech to text, uh, face labeling, speaker labeling, you name it, uh, the catalog is growing so much with with data that. Um, uh, I see that it's hard for the search engines to keep up with it, uh, or at least in, in our case, uh, you see that it takes uh, a seconds to retrieve a search results, uh, which feels slow. Um, another challenge uh, is yeah, the UX, the user experience. Uh, you see that uh, our catalogs are often very much uh, built around text and to present relatively small amounts of text and with uh, labels like face labels it's often like very 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 much uh, to present that uh, nicely for the user and yeah maybe also more visual visually instead of text uh, i would love to be able to you know, watch a video in our catalog and then just click on the face and say give me more of this person or lookalikes and that would be great um, so lots of things to uh, improve there. Uh, I don't know if there are vendors uh, in the audience, but please uh, also prioritize this. Uh, and then, yeah, lastly, uh, on the matter again of uh, ethics uh, and um, uh, bias and uh, incompletenesses uh, of, of uh, face labeling, uh, I think uh, the renewed or the, the growing attention to this uh, matter uh, is often addressed or you know, used in uh, discussions a lot on to point to the dangers of AI. Uh, well, I think it's, this topic deserves a 
bit of a broader uh, um, uh, understanding of, of incompleteness and bias as something that is of all times. Uh, because what we see now at Sound and Vision, uh, doing much of our scientific research also on big data, uh, is as well that uh, there are plenty of gaps uh, already there from a long time ago when we uh, manually annotated uh, because of the bias that is, uh, can also be inherently uh, yeah, part of selection, uh, selection uh, policies, uh, uh, choices to put somebody in your thesaurus or not, or to annotate, for instance, news and current affairs, always very detailed, but yeah, more trivial or lowbrow. Uh, uh, broadcast uh, to give it less attention. So um, on, on this topic, uh, Sound of Vision is writing currently some data story that will function as sort of a disclaimer to our archive and the data in it. Uh, and we hope to present that in, uh, uh, in the World Conference, actually, but who knows? And otherwise, we will do that in the next webinar next year. So uh, yeah, that was it. Um, Thank you for listening. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. I'm very sorry to, re to hear that the metadata orgy is pushing back forward in time, forward in time that we're not reaching that yet. I was hoping to get more news from that. But, uh, oh, with something to something to look forward to, Xavier. <laughs> Thank you anyway. It was a very interesting presentation. Um, to all our uh, listeners, uh, please keep asking the questions in the Q&A function. We'll be answering those uh, later on.